This video brought to you in part by the Patreon supporters of Cobra TV. If you haven't seen it yet, don't forget we interviewed the actress who starred as Special Agent Dooley of the Advocacy during the Xenothreat mission, and she also played the role of the new Babbage hologram. This is Special Agent in charge Dooley of the Advocacy. I'm commanding all citizens to subscribe to Cobra TV. There's a lot that I want to talk to you about, I, and I really want to know a lot about you. Like, I okay. To tell you a little bit about myself, I backed the game in 2015. I don't remember what happened back then that made me back in 2015, but what I've noticed is a lot of the people that I've met, they have also backed it. A lot of people backed it in 2015. So I don't know what happened in that year that caused everybody to do that, uh, but there was uh, just a large surge in pledges back then. But I quickly realized I didn't have a computer that would be able to play it uh, or or whatever, but I just wanted to support the development of the game. And I thought, man, eh, sometime in the future, I'm going to have me a computer. I'll be able to play it sometime. All the way back then, though, I knew about you and your channel. I'd just seen you, your videos around, type in Star Citizen, come across you. And uh, so all the way back then, I've known who you were. Now, similar, and you're going to probably laugh at this, I was basically doing what you do in the No Man's Sky community from the very beginning of the development, covering it, the guy with the news. So I know what kind of up and down journey. Uh, I don't what kind believe of... you could have had such a low effort that you'd both to compare yourself to me. Um, I, I genuinely think that the, the, what I do is super low effort. I literally just report on the news in the Star Citizen community. I love doing it. it. It takes a lot of time, don't get me wrong. No, no but, it, but it is pretty here's the important like the important thing about what you do is that there's there's news on spectrum there's developments to happen over there there's developments to happen on this star citizen in live video there's you know those hour long videos one thing might be said two things might be said that are really important um you got the uh, inside star citizen video you got a post that might be on the launcher uh, you got stuff everywhere something might have been said on twitter so for someone to want to follow all the everything, Star Citizen, they got to go to a lot of different places. So somebody like you, who goes and collects all that information, makes it in a nice digestible video, it's extremely important. So I wouldn't call it low effort. I'm not saying it's not intensive. I mean, but basically, it's it's something I quite enjoy doing. I do it anyway yeah. for myself. Um, and I mean, I'm not really adding much value. To the content, I mean, yeah, I'm crunching it down. Um, obviously, me and Nuba Five used to talk a lot uh, back in the day when we uh, when he started his channel as well. Um, and he went down the route of having the, the information really compacted down as small as possible. Yeah. Whereas I went to the route of uh, providing a little bit more of in depth about everything, but obviously not trying to overly fluff it out. Um, but, uh, right. I'm glad people enjoy my enjoy my videos, and I I, I think I've got a a reasonable reputation that that people um, will know my videos and not be like, oh, poor gamer, what a what a prick, uh, which, is, <laughs> which is nice. Um, this is more than I could have hoped for. <laughs> so I I, I want to know. I want you to go all the way back to that afternoon or night or whenever it was that you made Board Gamer YouTube channel for the very first time, and you decided you decided to make that very first video. What started it all? Uh, so I came out of running restaurants, um, and I was like, this is too stressful. Don't want to do it anymore. This is mm -hmm. pretty much hell. Um, and my brother's um, hemiplegic. He can't use his left side of his body. Um, so I, I was doing some care work for him. So right. I was like, well, I can, I can do some care work for, you, for him, and I can uh, look at doing this YouTube stuff. Um, and see if there's any money in it, any any business opportunities in it sort of thing, because I like the ideas, I've seen other people do it. Um, and I started making uh, videos on Natural Selection 2, Titanfall, and Diablo 3. Okay. Um, and my Diablo 3 content uh, was uh, pretty highly viewed. And like it was, it would get like 50, really? 100,000 views nice. in, like a, in a few days, because um, it was, 30 second to a minute videos of how to go and get particular materials or stuff that literally no one else had made. It was okay. the most simple, dumbest 
thing that I was like, what will people search in a search engine? That that was the, the sort of video format. Um, and it's sort of like after I'd done everything I could think of in, in Diablo 3 that hadn't been covered by someone else for these like materials, um, I just started checking out Star Citizen and... Wait, 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 what did you like catch wind of it? So I caught wind of Star Citizen in 2013. Mm -hmm. um, and was it something played... you saw on the, like what, what was it? Uh, the Kickstarter, is that what caught your eye? No, one of my mates said, oh, this is gonna be the next big game. Okay. Because um, we, we were always looking for opportunities in games that would be like Eve or be like the, a big multiplayer game where there'd be um, a mixture of money making opportunities that might be content creation, they might be uh, making an in-game casino, they might be that lots and lots of different random things that you'll be more aware of, of when you, that the game starts to get bigger. You're like, you're in the position to go, well, I'm gonna pursue this as an opportunity. So um, one, of my, one of my mates, for example, that I was talking to at the time, um, made a big uh, EVE Online casino at one point um, right. and sort of raked in a lot of, actually, I think, real money uh, in the end. Um, nice. But that, that, that was the sort of thing. It was sort of business related and, and motivated to start with. Um, and I started making a couple of uh, Star Citizen videos at, at, just on, oh, I found this game Star Citizen and there's a hangar module and running around the hangar module and talking about uh, some of the um, concepts that they had for the game. And then I realized there was only like two other content creators creating content on it. Yeah. Uh, and their content was um, pretty limited. So it was like, a, it was only a couple of segments and it, it wasn't really being covered. Uh, like the, the, it wasn't, uh, like features weren't being explained. The, the plans for the roadmaps weren't being explained. Um, there was no source of information to sit down and easily consume. Um, uh, what, what is this game about? What's it planning to do? It was sort of like quite vast and a bit complicated and uh, just information was just all over the place. Um, and you'd have to really, really research it before you understood what was going on. And even when you did, there might not be proper context to that. And there certainly wouldn't be a timeline and history of how it evolved. Um, so uh, I started just covering it more frequently, covering the features and explaining simple concepts to start with, in including like when we got Arena Commander, what ESP actually meant and how the pips worked and just really yeah. basic stuff. I didn't go into deep detail into it either. Um, because I noticed when I started doing some videos like that, people would go into very deep detail. And I was like, I don't want to compete with those people because they're smarter than me probably. And they've, they've done a load of research into it. And I, I wouldn't be interested in consuming that unless I was researching that specific thing for a particular reason. So yeah, I'll, I'll I wanted to cover stuff in more broad strokes. Um, and that sort of motive eventually motivated into doing pretty much that we do now daily content, uh, which is a mixture of news related um, summaries and uh, the features and, and sort of evolutions of the roadmap. And I hope so. That, what well, what hope year my, was it when you started noticing your channel take off with start like like the Star Citizen stuff was really catching on? Mm. And that's and that's what you really sunk your teeth in and said, this is this. This is it. This is where I belong. This is what I want to do. Uh, it's all relative, isn't it? Um, I mean. I've got a lot of friends that started YouTube um, just before me or just after me. Uh, some of them are absolutely massive. Um, don't know how much they're earning though. <laughs> that's, the, that's the thing. <laughs> it doesn't matter. It depends on what the reasons you're doing YouTube and content creation for. Some people are doing it because they need to pay the bills. Some people are doing it because they want to be rich. Um, some people are doing it as a hobby. It, it's it, there's a, there's a, a billion different reasons to, to create content. Uh, and mine is, well, a little bit of everything. I do want to, I do want to do well. I want to make a bit of money. I want to be able to keep on doing this for many years to come because it is pretty fun. It's pretty chill. Like I right. get to cover a game I love um, and uh, pay the bills while doing it. And I've been able to employ an editor as well, which I, she might turn up, who knows. Um, but uh, so I think 2015 is when I realized my channel, channel was gaining a reasonable amount of traction. You see, something happened in 2015. What was it that 
you gained traction in 2015 with Star Citizen content. I'm the, I backed in 2015, and a lot of my the the people that follow me on Twitch and YouTube, a lot of them are 2015 backers too. What happened back then? So what I was it that we, caught everybody's attention? You you had the original Star Citizen boom when the game the game first went live. Yeah, bam. Uh, I think they rescaled Star Citizen in 2015. There was a big Citizen Con. There was the, the reveal of some of the Squadron 42 trailers. Um, there was some very clever marketing from Cloud Imperium with some of their ships. And they started promising a load of features and rescaled Star Citizen. So it mm -hmm. was sort of the start of huge amounts of feature creep as well, which I do think captured a lot of people's sort of attention. Um, and then you had a load of people that either didn't enjoy EVE anymore or really loved Wing Commander back in the day that had just started going, oh, I've heard of Star Citizen. I didn't know Chris Roberts was involved with it. Or, oh, some of this looks amazing. But this was around the time they started to have like more tangible things in game and they sort of like were moving towards um, uh, getting the persistent universe in and things like that. So, I mean, it, it, I suppose it's, yeah, the start of when they rescaled the game to what we currently know it as. Um, I think their marketing was probably just pretty good around that time. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I think it was a big boom for Star Citizen, which it still is. Um, it's certainly cyclical, certainly down times for Star Citizen. Yeah. But, it, but they, they've more stabilized those booms now with Fleet Week and the Intergalactic Aerospace Expo and, and Citizen Con and things like that. They know when their big rushes of new players are coming in. Um, right. And I think with the playable alpha, they know how to keep them. Like People are definitely playing Star Citizen now a lot more than they used to. It's weird. I've I've put more hours in Star Citizen since I started playing in I think it was September of 2019 when I was first able to play it uh, you know, the way it should have been played. Like I had a computer, I tried to play it. It was a slideshow. I couldn't do anything. Sometimes it wouldn't even it would just crash the desktop. It was my computer's fault. But and uh, the end of 2019 is when I first got in and I was just blown away. I I like I said I was uh I was in the lead of, of a of a very large uh, No Man's Sky community where I was continuing covering the development, the further development of No Man's Sky as it continued to get completed. Um, and I ran a weekly podcast with everybody in the community. We had a good community. I was an actor in one of the ARGs that Hello Games wanted to, uh, that they, they, th they threw. That was fun. But... When I got done playing Star Citizen, I couldn't wait to come to YouTube and tell them. Like, my first couple of videos was talking to the No Man's Sky community. Like, you guys got to come see this. You guys got to play this. You're missing it. And um, none of them, they, none of them wanted it, right? They didn't want anything of it. So I kind of failed on that part. But when, my journey covering that, I ended up losing a massive amount of my community when the game was released, right? Because, you know, the no man's lie, it's not done, it's unfinished, they lied. So when you're covering Star Citizen through all these years, I know that there's been ups and downs, mm -hmm. lots of positives, lots of negatives. Have you dealt with a lot of uh, pockets of backlash that have affected your YouTube channel in the past? And how did you deal with it if you did? I mean, yeah, I mean, but it's it's not so much directly at my channel. I mean, there's certainly been people that have been um, angry or salty or depressed or whatever. Um, uh, but I didn't, I've never really had a problem with uh, any sort of um, mega trolling or my, my community has always been pretty good. It, it is not my place to defend Star Citizen or to right. love or hate Star Citizen. It is my job, well, at least my self-appointed job, to report on it. So. I don't, uh, and I'll keep on doing that whether it does great or not. It's sort of irrelevant. I'll, I'll, I'll mm -hmm. keep on going. So it, it, it doesn't matter if it goes up and down. What does matter is if it goes quiet. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> it never has. That's going to be it, bad, it, yes. It's never gone quiet. I mean, there, there have been content droughts. Don't get me wrong. There have been content droughts with CIG's communication or with um, them not releasing stuff or like, being huge periods of, of time. Is it 2016? I think at 2016 there was a there was a nine month period which was hell because there wasn't really any patch oh um, my god nine it was, it was something like it might have been six it, it was between six and nine months there was there was the huge content drought around then that was hellish um uh, but since then it's been it's been pretty good and there's been constant 
there's always stuff to talk about Star Citizen because they're always moving forward. There's a load of development stuff going on. Um, there's always a load of stuff to do in game now, um, and they're always updating the roadmaps and um, changing the stuff around. So, yeah, it's um, it's the gift that keeps on giving for content for my kind of content. Um, although Is I suspect that some people get annoyed that you were like, you've done this video before, and I was like, oh no, I haven't. I've done a 3.13 video roadmap bef uh, video on the roadmap before. And I do one, uh, I do like two or three throughout the lifetime of it. Before it gets released because it, it does change and I update yeah. them. Um, so how do you balance like covering the news and and keep your like your own personal opinion out of it or do you? Um, so I'll talk about the news I, but I, at the end of the day I am going to be biased. I don't say that I'm perfectly neutral. Um, I think I, I won't say that this is a good thing or a bad thing, typically. Sometimes I do. Um, but, I, I mean, when I give my opinion, that's truly my opinion, I say, like, this is my opinion, you don't have to agree with it, nor probably should you. Um, but this is, this is my view on it. I mean, just, just report on what Cloud Imperium say, and that's the thing. I don't need to be critical of what they say when I'm reporting on what they've said. Right. Um, but s sometimes they do stuff that is demonstrably just dumb or, or bad, like they did with the... A referral competition originally that was a very uh, misguided step. what was that they, so they did a um for 2016 or 2017 citizen con one of them one of the one of the citizen cons uh -huh. um, or games cons they they basically said um we're gonna have a referral competition whoever gets the most referrals or over 2,000 referrals um will get a, a idris m and get an all expenses paid trip to citizen con or games con yeah, and at the end of that, they then showed um, three or five content creators um, referral codes with interviews with them to try and promote them. Oh gosh! Like, so <laughs> this competition's for everyone, but only really these guys can win. Right. And I had, and I specifically had said I don't want to be part of this, so I felt really good about myself. <laughs> There's a lot of backlash about it because uh, I, I don't, I, I love CIG and I want to be involved with what they do. But I, I want to be more involved in, in press-wise. I want to be able to go to their offices and have a look around. I want to be able to get interviews with them. I want to go to Citizen Con and, and talk and, and, and know stuff and be able to talk about that stuff. I don't want to ever have... I don't want people to be able to say, you are a shill, we can't trust what you say. Now, that said, I have, um, over, uh, I think about six months ago, started accepting ships from them um, for uh, when they every time there's a new patch yeah they, they say haven't give it you can have a ship do what do what you want with it and as long as that remains the same do what you want with it there's no um i can say what i want there's no sort of stipulation on that i can just give it to us a giveaway great if that changes i won't participate with them because i i need my sovereignty what do you mean if it changes how what do you mean how what would they change if they I said you know. couldn't give it away well, no, if they said, uh, you've got to say this, or you've got to do a video on this. Oh, I see, talk I see. About this. So as, yes. soon, as soon as they start restricting what you can and can't say, or they, um, or they say you can't say negative stuff about them, or they overly wine and dine you, it's a slippery slope. It genuinely is. Uh, and I always I thought, like, look, if I want to go to Gamescom or CitizenCon or whatever, I, I can just ask my subs or viewers. I was like, um, you're more than welcome to donate to this. I don't want to take money from, from CIG because it's effectively taking money out of the um, backers' hands. That it, it's it's backer money that's supposed to go to the development of the game. It's not doesn't want to come to some egg-headed freak. Like, do you, do you know what I mean? It's it's yeah. People will call you a shill and they will use that against you. And I want to be as clean as possible. Um, and also, I think it's probably the right thing to do. But it's more that I think it's a sensible thing to do rather than the right thing. Yeah, I you know, but I think it's kind of unfair in this community, and I'm going to get a lot of crap for saying this, but um, for people throwing the word shill around, you know, I I play the game, I love the game, I'm excited about the game, and I think that shows on my videos, and people call me a shill. I have there's another prominent member in the community that says that I you know claims. And told his viewers that I work for CIG, that I get paid by CIG, 
and I replaced Rexilla because um, I came on the scene right when Rexilla disappeared. And so yeah. now this person says, I'm the one that replaced him. I'm getting that CIG daddy cash is what it was called. And it, it's just I think that the word is used. Um, I don't know. I don't know how to I guess too loosely or whatever. I mean, just because I'm excited and I love what the game is and I'm having fun with it. I'm called a shill. And I think but, it's really unfair that they could use that about you as well. No, so I, th I think it's so, sort of fair, or at least you need to just be aware of it. Look, I, I would refer to you as someone that is a bit biased about Star Citizen in the same way that I am, that you enjoy the game, you like the game, you want it to do well, and that's going to influence your opinion of it. When you see something that's potentially bad, you don't immediately go, oh, that's bad. You go, there's probably an explanation for this, or this is taken out of context or something. That that. That could just be that you're being logical or you're going to look at, read it and fully understand it before making a decision. But your decision won't be immediately driven by a face value that looks bad. Maybe it's not. It, it's a, so we, we've got bias, but that's sort of fine as long as you tell people that you have. I, I think like I, I think it's okay to be a shill as long as you say, yeah, I'm shilling. Like I, they, they give me this or they pay me. I don't see I don't see the problem with that. Like if, as long as you're honest about it, then hmm. people can make their own decision based on the information they have. They go, well, he's getting paid by them or he's doing this. Maybe he's a bit biased, a bit extra biased. I want my channel to do well. I want Star Citizen to do well. I love the game. I love it at the moment even. I love it as a tourist, just going around and what's available. But um, I don't know. I think people try and use the term shill as a, as a derogatory term just to be like... It's an insult. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, and to sort of like but their opinion means nothing okay well i suppose that's their decision to make i'm, I'm okay with them using the term shill it's annoying um <laughs> it, it is annoying that and i get called a white knight a lot you know but i in my videos i i tell people that there's bugs and i i stream live on twitch i don't know i think like 30 to 35 hours a week maybe even more and if there's going to be a bug, it's going to be seen there. There's no way I can hide it. And I, I get told that I hide my bugs. And there's just no way to do that. But um, I really want to ask you, like, what, is it, what does it feel like? Do you feel pressure? Um, because this is true. People do look toward you for the collective gathering of the information. Does, yeah. Is there a lot of pressure there to, A, get it right? Um, be get it all? Uh, I mean, to an extent, I mean, it's it's not that intensive. There's a process, and I have an editor now, which also reads most of the same stuff I do, so I can yeah. sanity check. Also, I've got friends in the community like Nubifier, who I sanity check against as well. Like, we talk, um, although we're not, not so much at the moment, seeing he's in deployment in Kuwait. Um, but... Uh, yeah, not not so much anymore. I mean, I've come into the sort of stride. I understand what I'm doing. Um, I, I just track but all the information. Was. I mean, yeah, to start with, I mean, there's there's a, a cross between I want the channel to be popular. I want to get stuff right. I don't want people to be angry at me at getting it wrong. I need to be getting enough views and doing enough interesting content to be getting money. Otherwise, I can't do this. Things like that. So there's a lot of worries to start with. Um, but once you break through those barriers of entry uh, and you get into, like, as long as you're paying your bills and then you're getting a little bit beyond that well that's great then you can um relax a bit i think yeah. um and then you've got some people like as well i don't feel the pressure so much in the fact that if i wasn't doing what i did or i missed something or my videos are a bit late there are the, the there's nubify there's super mac brothers there's there's a load of live streamers they can watch people in the community and content creators um they are pretty good at answering questions and people can ask them so um I don't, I don't think there's as much pressure as there, as there used to be. Uh, and I think my, I, 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 fall, I think the Star Citizen community largely is just pretty pretty chill and pretty cool. Uh, they're, I'd say they're typically an older community um, that are sort of like maybe 32 to 45, typically age range. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's sort of um, maybe slightly more reasonable on the internet compared to more angrier people or people that expect stuff a lot faster a lot quicker but um they are i mean my my first couple of videos the star citizen citizen community welcomed me with open arms i mean tons of people just came by to say hey welcome to star citizen 
Um, and it was just an amazing feeling because, like I said, I was potentially damaging my YouTube channel because I had typecast myself with No Man's Sky. And if I couldn't get these my fans on board with getting into Star Citizen, then I was pretty much doomed. And I did. You know, I did lose a lot of people. But the Star Citizen community just came in and flooded the YouTube channel very quickly and started mm -hmm. filling in that gap. And with more kindness than I've ever seen in any gaming community I've been in, and it's just amazing. And I think they get a bad rap out there about, you know, being called toxic community. They're, they're not. They're amazing. Well, no, so, I mean, uh, Star Citizen is, and I, I talked about this earlier, um, potentially in someone else's video or something. I, I, I refer to the Star Citizen community like Bitcoin and Star Citizen like Bitcoin. It's very volatile and it's very extreme at some of the, some of the ends. And, uh, and that's the way the media treat it. That's the way some of the community act uh, on the, and, and I do, uh, the Star Citizen haters, as it were, I don't like the term, but it's, it's accurate. I still can count them as part of the Star Citizen community, even if they literally, all they want to do is um, try and uh, crap on the rest of the community or um, make up stuff about Star Citizen and, and post it to media and, and, and things like that, or make up yeah. gossip or uh, reviews or whatever they whatever they want to do. They're still part of the Star Citizen community because they're involved in the Star Citizen community, even if it's that sort of crap posting. Um, so it, it's it's a weird thing that Star Citizen has that. It's interesting. I have no idea why it's so volatile. I'd say genuinely the Star Citizen community at, is the best gaming community I've ever been a part of. Like, hmm. if you go onto the, the Reddit for EVE Online or for Apex, they are not friendly communities in the same <laughs> way. They are not friendly. No, I know. Um, well, they, 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 well, they might be friendly, but then only if you follow the correct etiquette or you've been there for a long time or you know the right people, but I would not refer to them as... Uh, I'd certainly refer to them as more toxic. And I count myself as part of the EVE online community. Um, but uh, under a different pseudonym for many years, <laughs> obviously. Um, but uh, yeah, it's weird. Like, I don't understand why people um, go that far to say that Star Citizen is super toxic. But maybe it's just every gaming community is toxic at its extremes. Of course it is. Um, well, I think it just, for some reason, it looks like that on from the outside. Um when I first played it, I made a tweet or I responded to somebody on Twitter and uh, I'm like, oh, God, this or I don't know. I said, hey, this game is great. You guys got to play it. You know, join me. And somebody had messaged saying it's a scam. I'm like, well, I said they're probably dragging out the development because they're making more money it being in development than completing it. But it's still a great game and it's still being made. Immediately, I was flooded with DMs by people who see me say that on Twitter. And they educated me to what happened throughout the uh, lifespan of when it was kickstarted, what they went through, all, this, all these things. And that's the only way I found out that they weren't dragging their feet on purpose. At least that's my opinion now. Um, and so... From an outsider, there's a lot of misconceptions out there because there's so many voices out there that are so loud that are negative towards the game, the company, the community, that people from the outside, that's all we hear because there's not enough voices that are positive in the community taking care of the other side of that conversation. Most people just ignore it. We ignore the hit pieces. We ignore the hate. We don't talk about it. So there's only one side of the conversation being said. And that's the negative ones. So that's system. why I think the community is looked at as being negative because there's so many hit pieces out there saying they are. I just think that Star Citizen has yet to deliver anything that can be considered mainstream. Once it's got something that is more tangible, if it releases Squadron 42 at some point in the near future, or yeah. it's got uh, Theatres of War as a module that's polished and playable to, a, to a, a high standard, that's something that's mainstream that you can't then deny in the same way. You'll still get the right. same... You still get the same detractors that people get grumpy with or that, that hate Star Citizen saying somehow, even if even a Star Citizen did the, was the 
objectively the highest rated game of all time and made the most money and had the highest approval rating, they still say, look, I told you I was right. This is proof that I was right. And it, somehow they justify it. Like, it was, oh, it hasn't got this feature that it was promised. Yeah, Star Citizen's not going to have all its promised features in the same way that you envision them because everyone has a different vision of these individual features and not everyone can be correct. Um, mm -hmm. And Star Citizen like to iterate on all this stuff as well. So it's it's a bit of a hodgepodge. Um, it's, uh, I mean, I, I love the project. I think it's super interesting. I love the community. I love the devs. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I enjoy the game as a, as a tourist at the moment. I mean, it's slightly, slightly more... Well, you you said that again. You keep saying tourist. What do you mean by that? So it's not... A, Star Citizen is not a game I yet, as yet, sit down and dedicate my entire week to playing and grinding. See, yeah. that's what I was going to ask you. Like, how much time do you get to play Star Citizen with all the work that you do covering the news? Um, is uh, I, that the work that you do? Is that what's stopping you from being able to grind and play? No, so uh, no, not at all. The, the fact that there's nothing I want to grind for in game properly at the moment. I see. Like, I, I, there's no reason for me to do that. Um, I understand how the money works and the economy works. Um, I can just play the pretend number game. Um, I've got all the ships I want. There's nothing for me to progress to. And the servers aren't big enough and the game play mechanics aren't there yet for me to do what I want to do. I want to do base building. I want to do a billion different economy things. I want to um, get involved with um, org fights and, and big org battles and move to different star systems and do huge amounts of risk and reward stuff and do exploration. And just, I want to do everything the star citizen has to offer that's planned for it to offer. And I want there to be a reason and no more resets for that. Um, so if I had permanent progression, I'd play Star Citizen a lot more. At the moment, I play Star Citizen, play it outside of work, shall we say, outside of recording, maybe a couple of hours a week. It's, that, it's, it's not very much. I mean, I play it for like maybe 10 to 12 hours uh, for work as well, which has actually come down a lot since I've got an editor because um, my editor will capture the footage that I require for, set, for certain things. Um, I see. And at the moment, that's quite a low amount of time because um, we're sort of in between patches. Once we have the new 3.13 patch, uh, I suspect it will be 50 plus hours because I will be playing it loads, full work, trying to get as much footage as I can and enjoying it, just sort of playing it and like, trying to understand it as well. Um, mm -hmm. but, but I mean as a tourist because when the big patches come out, I, I play it a load and look around and do all the things. And then after a while, I stop doing that so much and I go back to my, my normal content and less gameplay. So I sort of visit the universe and then just go back to my, my normal sort of rhythm. And that, that's why I think it's like a tourist experience. It's, it's fantastic drawing those new playable patches when they first come out and there's a new thing. But beyond that, without the progression that I want, there's no huge reason for me to consistently play it to grind. And I quite like grinding games. I love the idea of grinding, doing salvage or, or mining because it's nice and chill. And it's working towards, I, I like toiling games. I used to play Rust a lot and I used to like, I, I didn't used to sleep very much, but I used to probably um, farm for like eight or nine hours a day and then do raids in the evening. But it was, yeah. I, I love that. I love the toil for the, 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 the intense action. And I think Star Citizen will probably cater for that. Um, See, I play Star Citizen for its emergent gameplay. I know that sounds like a yeah. meme, right? Uh, but, but the other day the we were on that's most of the stuff we have at the moment it's mostly emergent. yeah right? yeah exactly and but it does it better than any other game i've ever played though and i don't know if that's just an accident or if that was by design but the other day we had a stream we just got done taking doing the idris mission i think uh it was a bounty mission and one of our guys had quantum to an om and there was by happenstance a fully crewed hammerhead of actual players and he ran right into him right and not not collided but they started shooting at each other and he started calling us for help there's like 20 of us in a server in our party and he's like we i need help over here there's a fully crewed hammerhead i'm gonna get taken down so we hurried over there so this hammerhead all he seen was this one lonely fighter out there in the middle of nowhere and he started trying to shoot and kill him Next thing you know, this hammerhead had 19 more ships on its ass, and we were tearing him up. And he later saw that I was among them and found out that I was streaming on Twitch, 
came to Twitch and he said that that was the most fun that he had ever had because all he seen was one little guy and now there was a group of people trying to take him out and they were all bounties. It was amazing and that's why I play it. But so, go ahead. So with EVE Online, EVE Online had a similar thing where you'd be flying around and someone might attack you or you might be near someone's base or in a wormhole and you might be starting to attack and there's escalation, yeah? So um, you send in some ships, they send in some ships, you're trying to judge each other's force size to know what's an appropriate amount to send, have they run out of forces, it, should we commit everything? And this sort of escalated up. And I would love to have seen in your example where they were fighting the Hammerhead that actually he had a load more friends that came in as well. And, and we'll yes. get into a position of Star Citizen where that will start happening and you will start getting org battles like that. And that oh, be genuinely great. excites me, yeah. Yes, that's what I, oh God, I cannot wait for that. But is that it? Because that was my next question. Like you, you're a tourist right now. What what does the game need specifically for you to not be a tourist? Um, I mean, permanent progression, some more gameplay loops. Um, that would go a long way. I mean, so th things like theaters of war. Um, yeah. I'll play a load of theaters of war, but I don't really consider it Star Citizen in the same way. Um, yeah, me too. Uh, I think I'll play that a load, especially during the more lulled periods, because that's just a great thing that I can play on stream um, very often, and it will always be a bit different. It's very easy to play, and I can just talk by play, because I, I can probably just be uh, play pretty dumb and not have to think about what I'm doing and just talk. Um, so. Okay. Um, I do want to... Uh, are you willing to take a couple callers? Ask yeah. a... I haven't no asked worries. a couple questions. It's your, it's your uh, show, Cobra. I'm, I'm just here. As... I know, but you're the guest. You know what I mean? I don't want to have it. somebody come on and ask you a question if you don't want to yeah, no answer worries. any questions from anybody. Um, so if you want to get on the show, um, let me see. I'm going to pull you up, Cyborg War, if you want to go ahead and join the show. Um, there's two VIP rooms. I, lo I loved that. I didn't realize I had two VIP rooms. Yeah, I know. <laughs> um, trying one to find my, this cyber war. One of my mods set up all of my Discord pretty much for me, and there's still rooms that I haven't been in. <laughs> I didn't know we there. Yeah, there's so many rooms, too. I, I get it, dude. I get it. Like, there's so many. The one for you, he's my mod, the main mod, and he's he's just always adding stuff, and it's just so wonderful. He's such a good help. Cyber War, how you doing, buddy? I'm good. The, the one for you actually is amazing. That's true. Yes, he is. Mr. Board Gamer, how are you today? Hello. I'm good, thank you. My name's Cyber War. I'm a member of the Cobra Forest, and I just want to appreciate the fact that you've come on our show, and I've been a longtime fan of your uh, channel. Thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you. I just want to ask you one thing, because Cobra pretty much covered everything that he uh, I wanted to ask earlier, but that's why he's an amazing interviewer. But um, what was the one single thing that you saw in Star Citizen that made you go, you know what, I'm going to dedicate everything I want to do to this? Um, I don't think there's been, I, d I genuinely don't think there's been one single thing. Um, however, CitizenCon 2015 that I went to, I, made me go, I, I really loved that. I loved it so much. That was my favorite experience and made me go i want to be part of this community long term for sure it was also the first time i experienced the perfect level of celebrity which is some people recognized me there and bought me drinks but i wasn't mobbed and after the event no one knew who the hell i was anymore it was absolutely fantastic that is the perfect level of celebrity that's awesome um <laughs> yeah there's, there's no there's no one single thing i don't think unfortunately um, but so we, just the overall arc of the game was what drew you to it. To, to be honest, it's more the community than the game. I'm a very social gamer, and um, the, the the idea of Star Citizen being able to connect so many gameplay loops and the economy driving people to do combat and there to be so much like underlying stuff going on. That's what sort of attracts me to it. I want to be able to go to. A CitizenCon event or a bar citizen and be able to talk banter with some people and 
um, talk about like some ops that we're going to do and some some alliances that are going to be going on and do like, these big org warfare things and maybe not participate much in the battle or maybe a little bit in the battle doing certain things but participating in the way that well we've actually set up and, and scouted out a load of bases and we found stuff and we've been building loads of munitions for a long time and we've been supporting with a, a load of funds and, and, and things like that it's, it just i really love the idea of the social game in star citizen and and, and, and eve had it and they were running their fan fests for, for years and i think star citizens it, star citizen had fan fest and has fan fests with, with citizen con even before the game was properly released um and, and that's I just think that there's so much more that Star Citizen can do um, with that tech. Yeah, I just yeah, I, I think it's the social experience. I think it's the it's the community. I love the community so much. Like they've been genuinely pretty pretty cool to me. My community is absolutely fantastic on on YouTube that are more directly interacted with me. But the Star Citizen community as a whole has just been a great. And uh, it goes back to what Cobra was saying earlier. It's weird and concerning that it gets a bad rap because I genuinely think that the Star Citizen community is the best community I've been a part of. And I agree. Yeah. I agree as well. Thank you so much, man. You're one of us. One of us. One of us. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Cyber can you uh, do me a favor and go down there and see who else wants to come on the show and just send me a DM and I'll drag whoever it is up? Definitely, Cobra. Thank okay, you for coming on Cyber I appreciate talking to you. I appreciate it, buddy. Yeah, I'm lucky to have the community that we have built here. And we, we, we've been through a mess. We had, I had a Discord that was hijacked from me because somebody helped me make it a long, many years ago and they never transferred ownership to me and they hijacked it from me and deleted it. So we had to start a oh. brand new Discord all over again. And we built up um, pretty quickly. I think we got over 3,000 members in our Discord very fast. And, uh, it's just it's just an amazing community and I'm very lucky to have met a lot of these people and I'm I am friends really close friends with a lot of these guys and I would have never known them if I would never fumbled around in my first video on Port Alisar. Never. Yeah, I would say that I've kept a lot of my community uh, a lot more at arm's length at the moment because I but I, I I think once I've got a more playable star citizen for grinding and for for constant playing because I I will really 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 play a lot of star citizen i'm talking like 50 hour weeks on star citizen sort of thing and um, I, I think i'll start subsuming viewers and friends into playing with me more um i, wor I worry about not having time for people <laughs> that's genuinely it um okay uh, yeah, I'm getting a lot of messages. A lot of there's a lot of these guys want to come up and talk to you real quick. <laughs> yeah, no, All no right. Uh, so let's see here. I'm gonna bring up uh, Stormfire. Stormfire oh, in the man. chat. And of course, I put him in the wrong VIP lounge. <laughs> Hang on there, Stormfire. All right, there we go. Stormfire, welcome to the show, buddy. Thank you. Let me turn down the volume on my end. Okay. So this way I'm not getting double response and getting screwed up. First of all, board, I want to thank you for everything that you do. And Cobra, you add a lot to this game. And you don't even realize that. Thank you. I appreciate it, buddy. Board is not saying anything. Hmm. Sorry, I thought that I thought there was gonna be I, I didn't want to interrupt you. Yeah, I, no, I, thought there was, I thought there was more there, Stormfire. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sorry. Uh, I love you, Stormfire. Uh, like, uh, I haven't actually talked to you before in person. I just realized that now because I, I didn't recognize your voice. And that's because I, I talked to you loads uh, on stream and in Discord, but not on uh, not with real voice. It's nice, to, it's nice to finally hear you. Same here. And it's like the things that you do for Star Citizen is what makes it great. And I think... I agree with you. I don't think Star Citizen gets the proper recognition that it needs. And this community, when I came here in mid-2014, I was amazed by how people welcomed me. And I think what intrigued me was you seemed to have taken a special note to who I was, and you made me feel so welcome. And I appreciate everything that you have done. I think that the community has just been very welcoming to... to most people it's it's a genuinely a very friendly community um and i i think it's important that 
whether you love Star Citizen, whether you dislike it, whether you uh, are waiting on it, whether you're cautious about it or you see red flags, it's, just be friendly to people. And I, yeah, and obviously you've been very engaging uh, as a as a, uh, a viewer and as a as a commenter, which is very useful as well for feedback and that sort of thing. So, it's that's genuinely appreciated. Well, I thank you for saying that, and it's like I also I apologize to any other content creator out there. I'm sorry if I get critical at sometimes, but I don't like people beating the hell out of Star Citizen without getting to know the game first. And if they got to know it, they would realize the devs out here are not to hurt us. Jay Lee, uh, Tyler Wickens, and Disco Lando for what they do. They're all working their butts off to make this game happen. And it's like, just take a little time out and understand their job is not easy. None of it that they do is ever easy. So I, I, th I think for me, like, I find it genuinely, I, I don't, I literally don't mind or care if some random people on the internet think it's a scam or come into my channel and like, lol, 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 game is scam, you are bad, lol, lol, lol. Uh, I, I don't, okay, okay. They, they can hate Star Citizen, and that's cool, that's their cross to bear, whether they believe that or not, um, when it's more mainstream, I think, and hope the game will speak for itself. What does annoy me is when there are hit pieces or badly researched um, media articles that are just like, the, the Austin one recently, just saying, CIG staff were uh, upset that they were told to work during the snowstorm, oh, whatever yeah, it says. Seen that. And I was like, well, when you read the article, it's actually a nothing article, just saying we might have talked to some employees. At, at My CIG. anonymous source. That's it. Well, yeah, but it also implied a lot of stuff that they didn't say. So it was like assuming that because they before the storm, before anyone knew how bad it was going to be, they, obviously someone had had a conversation where they said, yeah, um, you'll more, uh, work from home if you can. You can come into the office if you want, if the roads are clear. Because they said, if the roads are clear. Obviously, <laughs> you know that that was before the storm. Um, yeah. and, and things like that. It was like all quite reasonable things. But then it was construed like people were expected to work. Well, yeah, I'd expected you to work as well if there wasn't a storm or the storm wasn't very bad. Don't go, don't go chill out. It, it, it was bad. And then Cloud Imperium said, look, we, we, we're going to prioritize your safety. I think Chris Roberts literally sent everyone an email saying you'll be paid, clock in as normal. It's all good. Um, like, I, I, just, I don't understand. I looked through the article and I just went, what is this? This article was trying to frame this as some sort of this tragedy that, that's happened where people died, and obviously not any CIG stuff, but the, the, the snowstorm in, in, in Texas, as CIG were, were doing something like monstrous to their employees. I was thinking, that, I don't understand why you've written this. This doesn't make any sense. <laughs> it's so good talk, many... that's why. Well, no, so that, okay, it doesn't make more sense because I researched the guy that wrote it, and he's not, he doesn't normally write pieces like that either. So it was really odd, and I still can't. Really? Yeah, 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 and some of his articles have not have not been too bad at all. Like I looked at them and I'm, oh, these are quite reasonable. It was very odd, um, and it was a bit of a nothing piece. Like when you actually do, read you it, think it, that he was trolled? Oh, yeah. and, he, I, and that I, he I, thought like someone literally did email him, but they were trolling him to see if they can get him heated up to write an article, and I that's what that it was all about. Some of his sources or some of the information he used have come from people that were not CIG employees that were sources. Yeah. Uh, but I, and I think some of the sources, he said that he talked to CIG employees. But he doesn't say that throughout his article that all the sources are using are CIG employees. So it might be a mixture of the two. Um, I just don't know. I, I, I don't like it when everything's anonymized. Um, I mean, he even anonymized the, um, or made anonymous, I'm not sure if I, that anonymized is a real word. Maybe I just made it up. Um, but he, he, there was a, CIG responded in quite a, limp way sort of like oh we're really sorry to hear that uh, some of our employees that we don't know if are real are, uh, were sad that's basically what they said and i was like deny it deny it this is crap but they apparently they didn't but they even said that the person they talked to was a cig spokesperson like they would have given you all their name and title you don't say that as a spokesperson when you have the name and title you use spokesman when you want to be able to deny things or you want to be able to limit damage. It's weird, right. it's weird for an outlet to say that. It, it, yeah. There was just so many weird things with that article and it was a bit of nothing, but there's been so many Star Citizen articles that are just really focused on 
I would say, misinformation or willfully not fully drilling down into stuff. Because it's not necessarily all misinformation. And some of these articles do bring up some reasonable points. But then they purposefully leave it at the worst possible point with, like, delays and things. And Star Citizen should have originally come out in 2014 or, or something like that. And it's still not out. And no one knows when there's going to be a release date. And they're still making all of the money. I know. Like, it's like, <laughs> that's kind of true. But you've willfully not gone into that to try and make that sensationalist and that didn't really annoy me sorry Stormfire, is that the is that the answer you wanted i'm not sure you're <laughs> <right>. <laughs> no that's all right we kind of went on a tangent it, was, it just was more sorry. me doing a shout out to you it's like zen who's ad that you brought in it's like listening to one of the shows she did with the narration of it it just was very pleasurable and enjoyable and a true shout out to her because she, she does a hell of a good job Thank you for that, because she's very shy as a person. Uh, I, I think that she's probably avoiding the podcast uh, tonight because I said, don't worry if you're you know, too tired to do it. Um, I, I do want to start to get her into things like this because I, I think the community will really like her. I mean, she's going to be at certain cons. She's going to be at Bath Citizens. She will be on stream with me. She will be um, uh, face coming with me nice. in the stream and stuff like that in the future. Um, I just want to ease her into it so she's comfortable. Um, but, uh, yeah, thank just, you. I, I, I still appreciate that. Thank you. And one other shout out to someone at CIG that we don't hear much from mm -hmm. anymore. She's now just started to come back on the social media. A lot of people have picked on Sandy Gardner, and she put her heart and soul into this. I know how much she has done. I am not at liberty to say it, how much she's done, because that's not anybody else's business. But she is a mm -hmm. good, kind person. If you go to Citizen Con, if when they have it again, if she happens to be there, you should thank her for what she does. She does care about the community, and people don't seem to realize that. I think that even if you don't know Sandy, and you don't want to know Sandy, and you have ill will towards her or whatever, it's hard to deny that she hasn't helped make Star Citizen's monetization model and marketing work. Like, she is one of the core reasons that Star Citizen has become so big especially to start with. Like, it was her, a load of her ideas and the way that she did stuff that's made the game what it is today and got the funding and got the community behind it, or at least started doing that. So, it, it, yeah, um, she's definitely done a ton for the game. And obviously there's a lot more, as, as you uh, have alluded to, that behind the scenes that people have not seen. So true. All and right. I, and I'm going to... Thank you so much. Oh, sorry, yeah, go ahead, Zoran. I just want to say it to you, Cobra. I, you may want to move me down give other people a chance because i can talk too much okay buddy all right i'm gonna bring uh wuxer in here thank, thank you. you so much man go ahead and just jump down there yourself it might be easier oh now you're making me go do some work <laughs> <laughs> thank you Stormfire. you're welcome all right i'm gonna bring up uh wuxery wuxery now he wants to come on uh wuxery thank you for coming on buddy what's up well first and foremost I want to say hi to Board Gamer. Love all your stuff. And Sen is doing a fantastic job. Thank you. Appreciate it. But, uh, and, and this is maybe two, two, two softball questions, but what has been your favorite theory crafting piece about the game? And then secondly would be what has been your favorite ship name you've seen so far? Oh, I can't share what my favorite ship name is. Because it's my ship names that I've got. I have not. I'm not telling people about yet until I've got them all. Um, trying to think of if there's. No, I. Mm, I. 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 I don't want to share the the, the 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 second part. Sorry. Um, I don't blame you. Yeah, I was, I was thinking. Nah, no. Um, <laughs> uh, so what has been my favorite theory craft I mean science yeah like um, so as you're as you're processing all the news and stuff like that like you know the Corsair is not out the Redeemer is not out there's still a bunch of stuff that's like not out yet what have you had the most fun theory crafting what you could use it for so I think it was the probably the endeavor and science gameplay for that because there's so much going on with that ship and talk, uh, thinking about farming and thinking about um, overclocking items or tweaking items, whatever they're going to call it, 
um, when they've done and the manufacture of um, space drugs um, and stuff like that. There's, there's a huge amount of stuff that you can do with science and they've talked about with science and sort of really excited about that. I do think it's going to be quite far away, uh, far, far many years in the future, like three years plus out before we start to see that sort of science gameplay. But maybe I'll be wrong. Yeah, I think it's, the science gameplay and the endeavor is probably the, the most excitingly theory crafted shit I've had. I mean, some base building stuff as well. Like, I'm really excited to build a base. I'm, I don't have that many super expensive ships. I do have a couple, but I do have a Pioneer. And I'm sort of excited about that being a mobile factory. And that opens up a huge world of possibilities. They've, they've basically said that the Pioneer is no longer an outpost builder and mover. It is a mobile factory, which will um, be more expansive for base building. And I was like, what does that mean? That means good and better and more. But I don't... So I need yeah, what does that mean? Yeah. Huh. More. More base, more good. <clears throat> Well, All excellent, right, Alfred. No more of your time. Right, so Thank you very much. Question. Thank you, Wuxry. I appreciate it, buddy. Sorry I didn't answer the second part. Well, I think it's funny you blushed when you thought about it. <laughs> you wanted to say it. You want people, like, you want to share it. But you, he's like, nah, no, but nobody would take it anyway because only I would surprise. like it. No, 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 no. I was surprised I got it. I was surprised I got it. Like, Why is no one called their ship this? this Wait, you did get it, but you don't want to tell us? So there, there's still some ships I, I don't have that I want to put the name on. I see. I got it. Okay. All right. Thank you, Wugsry. No problem. All right. We are. We got Fist25 joining the show. How you doing, Fist? Oh, he's muted. There we go. I'm great. How are you guys doing? Doing good, man. Yeah. Having a blast. Yeah, so... I got, I got a question for both of you, but first I'm going to start with a little story. So, Board, <laughs> every day when I go to work, I put my phone up on my truck, and I put it in the mount, and I, and I just listen to, like, different Star Citizen stuff. And uh, <laughs> you're right there. You and Cobra are right there in the top two. And every morning, man, I'm nice. listening to your guys' voice as, <laughs> as I drive to work. So it's pretty cool having a chance to talk to you. Oh, no worries at all. Thanks. Thanks. So it's, it's people in the community that give us the questions and the content to, and, and the reason to actually and the views to do what we do. So appreciate it for, for listening and watching, mate. Yeah, man. It's been great. Um, you and Cobra are probably the two main reasons, uh, at least as far as research and, and learning things about the game um, that kind of got me into doing content creation. So one of my fellow Cobros, uh, Java Sparky, and I, we we just a few months ago started the YouTube channel on Star Citizen content. And I mean, I got an interview with Cobra and Vega on Monday. And it's it's been super cool. And you guys have just been an inspiration to me. So my question to both of you guys is, as a new YouTube content creator, especially on Star Citizen content, what advice can you give myself and Jawa to kind of put us you know, put us over the top a little bit. You know, what what can you give me here? You go first. Um, yeah, so mostly if you're doing it as a hobby, but you do want to expand it, do what you enjoy, do what you like doing, uh, and then uh, iterate on that. Um, potentially look at a load of uh, other content other people are doing. Don't worry about subsuming and taking bits of their ideas and their videos and using them in yours. Um, try to make some unique content if you can. But you'll notice that whatever content you do, someone else might have already done. But the fact that you're doing it will make it unique. Um, so don't worry so much. And you're going to do stuff wrong. You're going to do stuff um, that doesn't hit the mark. You're going to do stuff that overly hits the mark and you don't understand why. Um, ask questions of other content creators and people in the community. Um, and don't take, um, don't let trolls get you down because, you know, some people on the internet are just mean. Yeah, yeah, they can't be. <laughs> yeah, just be you, man. I just uh, do what's fun, right? Uh, don't do like, for example, don't do a, a will it fit video just because you think it'll get clicks. I don't do stuff like that, right? I could probably do a will it fit video series just to have stuff to dump onto YouTube, but I don't want to do that. I want to do, 
I want to do the Cobra character, and I want to show how fun it is to play the game for everybody out there who might not own it. Or maybe they quit playing it for a while. I've got so many people who message me saying, man, I, I started playing again because of you. You know, and just uh, do the content. If you enjoy watching your content, then other people will. Just be yourself. Awesome. Hey, well, thank you for the advice. And can I throw in a quick plug here, Cobra? You sure can, buddy. Anytime. All right. All right, guys, if uh, if you're interested, we our YouTube channel, just search Fisting Jawa or go to our website, FistingJawa.org. Make sure to check out Board Gamers channel and uh, tune in Monday at 730 Eastern. Fist, uh, myself and Jawa, we're going to interview Cobra and Vega on a podcast just like this. So hopefully nice. we'll see you Monday. I look forward to it, man. I really do. All right. All right thanks, guys. OK, see you, Jawa. All, right. All right, Fist. You, so he keeps mentioning Vega. I don't know if you know who Vega is. I got my wife to play with me. She's in the verse. Oh yeah, dude, we are we are uh, we're a riot. When we're always some killing problems. each other, huh? Does that cause some problems? It does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, some extra. I'm not a lot of problems outside of streaming. Is what I outside of streaming. Yeah. No. Well, she's the stuff that happens outside of streaming. She could take out of me. In the game. Okay. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so, you, know, yeah. you know what I mean? It works out. So, but yeah, she, she doesn't allow me to. I, I made a couple rap songs here and there and Star Citizen with the FOIP. I did some rapping and uh, she murdered me for it. But it's fun playing with somebody that, yeah, that I know very well and we play off each other really well. And she's a, she's a good girl. Love her to death. But yeah, that's who he was talking about there, Vega. Um, let's see. Was there anybody else that needed to be coming up towards the the hour here? I wanted to make sure I got. I think um, who else wanted to come on the show? Was it you, Widowmaker? I believe so. Yes. All right. So I think we got one more caller that wants to come on here real quick. So we'll go ahead and get him up. Widowmaker, what's up, buddy? Hey, what's going on? Not much, man. What brings you on the show today? What's that? I said, what brings you on the show today? Widowmaker? Yes, I'm here. Hi, uh, you're on with Board Gamer. Did you oh, want to come on? Sorry. sorry. Uh, first of all, let me start off by saying I'm glad to be back, bro. I'm glad that you're feeling better. Thank um, you. And first thing I always ask of... Uh, board gamer every time i go to one of his streams how's your dad yeah he's doing very well thank you very much um i sat there and um just wanted to say i sat there and i backed back in 2012 i was well t late 2011 uh back when the kickstarter went off and um i just wanted to say that i was getting kind of stale on it and all of a sudden i sat there and found um i found a video of cobra and it was one of his ones when he first started and he was just going around and sitting there looking at stuff. I remember the one, it was the one where you found the scrapyard and you were so amazed at everything and to see somebody with fresh eyes and the joy in your voice and everything was awesome. <laughs> and gamer do not sit there and ever downplay what you do. What both of y'all do is very, very important to this community uh, you both have different styles, but you both are very integral for this community and offer information and entertainment. And we are so grateful to you um, and grateful to both y'all. And y'all just keep up a good work. And tell Zen she can come on. Nobody cares that she's from Essex. <laughs> uh, yeah, they do. I don't know what that joke <laughs> means. So, uh, yeah, I don't, I'm and not going to comment board, on it. And board, you don't forget your your head is not an egg; it's a potato, Mister Spud. It depends on the angle. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you so much, both y'all. Um, I had a stroke back in 2018, so all I pretty much do is play Star Citizen because I can't work anymore, and I sit here with my child and my uh, wife and everything. We just have fun, and uh, my wife gets on here. My my daughter likes to talk. Um, but thank y'all so much, and we very much appreciate everything y'all do. Thank you for the call, Thank you, Widowmaker. Thank you, buddy. Appreciate the call, man. 
No worries, no worries. Uh, let me let me get out of here so somebody else can get up here and talk to uh, to a uh, board. Okay, bud. I think that's uh, pretty much it for the callers. Oh, there's a couple people still in there, but none of them messaged me, so I'm not sure if they want to. Um, so, is there anything that maybe you would like to say before we end the show? Uh, something maybe you wanted to talk about, but we didn't get a chance to go over. Not particularly, I mean, I'm I'm pretty excited for three point thirteen. Um, I'm excited for the theaters of war tests on uh, probably this weekend. Um, obviously, they're Eva Carti tests, so um, at least I uh, so I can't talk about them afterwards. But there'll be leaks, and and I can have a, a particularly um, angry, depressed, or excited look in my eye when talking about Theaters of War. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, you can um, just kind of read your expressions. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, for me, um, any time anyone has any ideas for content or feedback or, or whatever, or any problems with Star Citizen they want to voice or air, um, feel free to contact me because that drives my content. And I think that some, obviously someone asked earlier um, uh, about what can you do as a new content creator. Ask a community, take some advice from people, but don't have to listen to all of it, and don't be afraid to ask people what they think. Um, and that's sort of quite important as well. So, yeah, right. thanks for sort of having me, Cobra. It's very much appreciated. I, li I like doing stuff like this because it um, helps me get my sort of finger on the pulse of what's going on um, and yeah. ne network a bit more. So, thank you. I really appreciate you coming on. It's my pleasure, totally. Like I said, you know, before I even started doing Star Citizen, I knew who you were. I saw your videos and I was dreaming about the game as I was watching you. So, <laughs> it is a real pleasure to have you on the show to speak to you. Um, and I'm, I'm really happy you came on, dude. I, re I appreciate it. Now, I will put your link on the video on YouTube. <laughs> I don't think there's a single person that uh, doesn't know who you are that knows who I am. Um, but I'll go ahead and include that. If you have any other links, website or whatever, um, send that over my way in a Discord DM. And I'll include all that stuff in the uh, Yeah, YouTube no video. worries. I'll, I'll haul myself out. No, no problem, mate. Okay. All right. Thank you, Board Gamer. No, thanks really for appreciate me. it. You have thanks a for all the questions as well. Love you guys. All right, maybe have a good one, board. You, buddy. No worries. You take care. Where am I all going? Right, see how, it, board. How do I leave? How do I leave? <laughs> don't um, let him out. Don't know how. Oh. Hey, let's see how, how long it takes him. I don't even. Oh, he's gone. Good no, job. Have I, have I he's gone? gone? Yeah, he's gone. You're gone. Don't worry about it. Gone. No, you're not. Oh. Don't say anything. Okay, he's gone. <laughs> let me go and get him <laughs> off the screen. <laughs> I was okay. like, oh, he's really not going to let him go. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to keep you here, board gamer. You're never going to leave. You are. Ne you have been consumed by the Cobra <laughs> Force. What a great show, man. Thank you, board. I appreciate it, dude. Um, so we um probably should go back down to the uh, Patreon room. So I'll see you down there, buddy. All right, man. That was amazing, Cobra. Thank you, man. Was somebody just slurping? No, no, it's not. Nobody was slurping. No, no, not at all. Oh, nope. I, I don't know if anybody on Twitch heard the not slurping, but when I came back in here, I heard a bunch of slurping. <laughs>